What's going on guys? This is Rob and with future movies coming out from both Fox and Disney based on the Marvel comics, I thought it'd be pretty fun to sort of go back and talk about uh, different Marvel characters, some of whom are some of my favorites, uh, some of whom have uh, have or have had a major impact on the Marvel timeline or some who are just obscure but deserve a little more attention. And uh, I figured this first video could be about a guy named Mastermind or as most people know him, Jason Wingard. Jason Wingard was really kind of this interesting character. He wasn't a major figure in the Marvel comics for a long time. Uh, he had this sort of pop-up where he appeared, he had some important roles, and then he just kind of fell into obscurity and then eventually died. Um, the first big, uh, big event that he had was the fact that he was an original founder of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Now, of course, Magneto was the one that founded the Brotherhood, but he was one of the first members alongside uh, the Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Toad. Now, due to the actions of an alien from another dimension called the Stranger, who we won't get into, uh, the original Brotherhood was disbanded. Uh, the next event that he got himself into was his attempt to be inducted into the inner circle of the Hellfire Club, which was a villainous group reserved for premier individuals who were able to earn their way into that group by demonstrating their ability to basically go to any lengths or to demonstrate just how powerful they could be. And they effectively had to prove themselves as being worthwhile or a member that was worth contributing to the group. Now, the way that he basically auditioned was by using uh, a mechanical device known as a mind tap mechanism uh, that helped to augment his own mental illusion powers to take over the mind of Jean Grey uh, as Phoenix Force. The powers of Jason Wingard allow him to manipulate the mind of a human being or a group of human beings so that they believe that what they hear, feel, smell, uh, and taste are 100% true. And with the help of external mechanisms, he can affect the minds of people like Charles Xavier or, as we just said, um, Jean Grey as Phoenix Force. Now, when Jean Grey became the Phoenix Force, she had put these mental blocks in place to keep the powers from basically running rampant and causing all kinds of havoc. As Mastermind had taken over her body or taken over her mind and manipulated it, these mental blocks began to fall down. The last remaining mental block was her tie to... Uh, Cyclops. And if Cyclops had engaged in a mental battle with Mastermind in order to force him to relinquish his control over Jean Grey, he ended up losing. Uh, Cyclops lost. And as a result of this, the final barrier in Jean Grey's mind uh, was removed. And these forces, these Phoenix forces, just flooded her mind entirely. The Phoenix Force was this elemental entity that had existed since the formation of the universe and had never really engaged in the emotional feelings of the human race. And so for the Phoenix Force to be engaged in the emotional aspects, love, hate, compassion, uh, you know, um, uh, a desire to improve oneself, because the Phoenix Force had never experienced these, it basically drove the Phoenix Force to a state of complete and total insanity. It was this rush to experience as many emotions as possible and to relish in the emotions that the Phoenix Force enjoyed the most. When the Phoenix Force realized that it had been manipulated by Jason Wingard, it turned Jason Wingard's power against itself, against himself, and threw him to a state of insanity when the Phoenix Force exposed to him a glimpse of what godhood was like. Um, now, of course, once um, Jason Wingard was able to regain his sanity, he went through this state where he seeked revenge against everyone that he believed had done him wrong, had, had screwed him over. Basically, he went on this tear to take revenge against the X-Men. He uh, went after Wolverine, where he basically kind of duped his fiance into breaking it off with him and uh, you know opening up ties with the criminal underworld, which kind of left uh, Wolverine in a state of complete and total emotional destruction. Because not only had he lost the woman that he was truly in love with, Jean Grey, but he had now found love in the woman that he was with. I think her name was Mariko uh, Yoshida, but I'm not going to I'm not going to swear to that. But he had found love with her and had now been rebuked. Uh, the next was to take revenge against uh, Mystique or against Rogue by forcing Rogue into a state of mental insanity by breaking her ties or by unbalancing her ties with uh, Carol Danvers and sending Mystique into a state of turmoil. And I think he actually uh, induced a nightmare and let her know that he was, let Mystique know that he was the one that was responsible. Um, he manipulated the X Men into thinking that Cyclops' now fiance, who was a clone of Madeline Pryor, 
uh, into believing that she was a reincarnation of the Dark Phoenix, hoping that uh, the X-Men would destroy Madeline Pryor. Now, the reason why Madeline Pryor was a significant part of this plan was because uh, Cyclops was in a state of complete and total depression. And when he saw Madeline Pryor, he immediately latched onto her and believed that she was Jean Grey reborn. Now, because she was a clone, uh, she thought that she was Jean Grey. For a long time, she believed that she was Jean Grey before she became the, Coblin, uh, the Goblin Queen. But nonetheless... Um, after a time, Cyclops realizes what's going on and realizes that this is basically mastermind behind all this. And the X-Men defeat him in short order. Uh, it's really not much of a, of a battle at all. He eventually tried to tap into the Phoenix Force, but is uh, defeated by Rachel Summers and Excalibur and is imprisoned with the delusion that he uh, has achieved cosmic awareness. Uh, eventually, he died of the legacy virus. And, uh, you know, before he, before he kicked the bucket, <laughs> he uh, asked Jean Grey to forgive him. Uh, you know, for everything that he had done. And of course she did, and he was able to die in peace. But um, he left a legacy in the sense that he had three daughters, uh, two of which became or had the same kind of powers he did, and uh, one of which was uh, had the ability to fly. Her name was Pixie. Um, it also turns out that um, he had uh, orchestrated an illusion in the mind of a uh, e extraordinarily powerful mutant called the Sentry into believing that if he had ever re recalled his abilities or used his powers, or I'm sorry, recalled who he was or used his powers, that the devil would attack Manhattan, uh, which of course we'll get into that much later on when we get to the Sentry uh, and, uh, and Robert Reynolds in the Void. So um, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, again, Mastermind wasn't the most prominent character in the history of the Marvel comics, but he was cool. And he was interesting for what he was. And uh, he was really kind of a fun character to read about and to watch with his engagements and uh, his, uh, his ability and his attempts to uh, manipulate the Phoenix Force and to uh, you know exploit it to his own ends. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.